Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're brand new to the show, if you're wondering what is Creative Chat Cafe, well, Creative Chat Cafe is the talk show hangout that brings you guidance, inspiration, and results for all your marketing, business development, and leadership needs. And today, I am Zaf Zan, your host. I am so looking forward to the next 30 minutes with you. And also my co-host for the day. Welcome back, Sandra Feierstein from Pursuit of Seattle. Woohoo! Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. We gotta give you some clapping hands. Hang on a minute. Let me find it. Woohoo! Oh, welcome back. As you all can see, that's only two of us because we have a great topic and we have a lot to share and if we had added another person to the show it would be more than 30 minutes you know what I mean because we gals we can yap and yap and just forget about the time when we're having fun right Sandra absolutely <laughs> so um, I'm just you know gonna um, let Sandra introduce herself a little bit so you folks out there will get to know her a little bit more and what she does go ahead Sandra yeah, thank you so much for having me back. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I love being a part of the show because I'm a new business owner. I just launched my business in the spring. It's called Pursuit Concierge and Lifestyle Management. Uh, we basically give people their time back. And it's good for personal use. It's good for corporate use. It's great for having it as an amenity in your building. We are so versatile. And what that means is... I've had to do a lot of research to be able to figure out how I can be so versatile. So I'm really excited about today's topic because I have put in many, many hours into figuring out exactly what I'm <laughs> doing. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And you're absolutely right about today's topic. In fact, I on my end, I've been researching a lot too. There's a lot of trial and errors in trying to do this. So for you folks out there, if you're wondering what we're talking about today, uh, we're actually going to be discussing the topic simple payment processing options for small businesses so in case you know if you're doing business and most of the businesses these days are done online or pretty much wherever you are because most of us are on a de uh, mobile devices it's either the smartphones or our uh, tablets and sometimes when we are small business owners we need um, a you know, it's very simple payment processing tool that will help us, you know, get paid really, right, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> we want some. Show me the money. <laughs> yeah, show me the money. One more time, we want ka -ching. Um mm. And it's true. And um, there are so many uh, things that, uh, you know, we can use this in. But before we even get started, folks, I uh, just wanted to share with you the hashtag for the show. So if you look at the bottom of my, my screen, it's hashtag Creative Chat Cafe. And you can watch our shows Wednesdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this website right here. My finger never know where it's going. So it's, uh, you know, entrepreneurs at soar.com um, and watch our shows there and catch up with our previous episodes on our website. So if you're pretty brand new to the show, we usually to do three things. It's pretty much uh, three layout that we actually uh, do during the show. The first part of the show will kind of have a, um, a brief discussion of uh, today's topic, which is simple payment processing options for small businesses. And then uh, we will actually, in this particular show, Sandra and I will actually show you some solutions, some tools, some apps, really, that would help you, you know, process uh, your payments. We all want to get paid, folks. I mean, hello, you know, who doesn't want to want money? Money, right hello um, that's why we're in business really and then uh, we also have some sort of inspiration for you resource for you at the end um, so that maybe some of you will get an idea to get, help you get started um, Sandra as you and I know small businesses right the days of having to pay a monthly fee just to enable um, us to accept you know any kind of credit card processing you know or even um, bank card I right. mean it, we, we live in this day and age where 
come on, you can even pay with your smartphones these, these days. Have I, you ever used one of those things? Uh, well, which part? Like the ones that you just like... Yeah, you yeah. know when you use your smartphone and just you, you pay for your coffee and just scan it and, oh, you're, you've paid your, your uh, purchase. Have yeah, you I haven't done that. I've done the like using it as my ticket to get on an airplane thing, mm. which is kind of similar, right? I think like... Right. Like, totally different technology, but the idea yeah. of using your phone, there's something, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but <laughs> yeah. I'm very scary about that to me. <laughs> I feel like I need my separate tools. I know. I feel the same way you feel because although I'm very like, I feel that I'm an online shopper, but I've not gotten myself to get that far yet where right. you know um, I'm just paying with my phone my my mindset still thinks what if I do that maybe somebody can access the information of my phone I don't, I also don't know. know if I need it to be any easier for me to spend money because yes. I spend enough sometimes it's nice <laughs> when something to happen, you have to go get your cash and there's like all this extra deliberate effort it gives right. me that extra time to think, do I really need to make this purchase? Do I really need to buy that yeah. sandwich? But usually I do want to buy that sandwich. And so if I could just <laughs> zap it, it'd be really nice. It'd be but. done, right? <laughs> and I think, you know, um, yes, I agree. And I'm sure you do too. You know, you cannot beat cash. It's always better. But in this modern day and age, sometimes I feel that people have issues carrying um, cash for two biggest oh, reasons. I actually, you know, face that myself. First one I think is, you know, you lose items, right? You lose your money. And if you lose money, you cannot replace them. Uh, unlike credit cards, you right. can just kind of call in somebody somewhere, a solution center, customer, as a customer service center, and just kind of report that your card is stolen or whatever. And then the well, second part... reimbursed right away. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's the reason why I think many people, you know, don't want to carry that many cash, uh, that much cash. And then the other thing is fear of being robbed, especially if you live in a big city. Uh, getting your wallet snatched or or your bag snatched, it's kind of, you know, not out there. It's really possible. So you might lose your money easier. And when when you lose your money again, cash, you you can't track it. So I think the battle here is really about, you know, cash versus plastic. At least plastic you can call into somewhere and report that it's stolen. But you know, we do live in an age where uh, people are paying uh, for their purchases online, people are big online shoppers, and small businesses have to figure out to cater to that need, to that you know, to the uh, to make their uh, the lives of their customers much simpler, much easier. Um, and there are so many apps, solutions, tools out there, uh, payment processing tools really that could really help us with um, you know being a uh, getting paid. We are here to discuss some of the simple tools that small businesses can use to accept payments in the business wherever they are, be it online or on any of their mobile devices. Uh, so let me really ask you this, Sandra. Do you actually use a tool in your business to accept mobile payments? And if yes, what one feature of that tool that helps you decide to use it in the first place? Yeah, so I my my services are on a subscription basis, uh, mm -hmm. or you can purchase kind of a block package. Uh, mm -hmm. So I need to be able to make a sale anywhere because right. without talking, someone's ready to go. Great, let's get you signed up. So yeah. I needed something that could not only handle recurring payments but one-time payments as well. That was. Uh, really simple to use that was really diverse and so I ended up landing on Stripe because there's really not that many services that can handle recurring payments and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why I that's probably the primary reason why Stripe was even a contender Wow, Stripe is actually pretty new to me because I've never heard of Stripe before speaking to you today yeah they are actually supposed to be one of the most I'm pulling it up right now. They just, they, like, Facebook uses them. Um, a, a bunch of people are using them, and they're, they're estimated to be at, like, a trillion or something like that. Like, they're, they're one of these payment processing solutions that has just Let me see if I can pull it online and share it with our audience yeah, out here. Give me a second. Well. Is this the one? 
So that's the service that I use, and it says okay. uh, here's here's an article from Wired uh, days ago. Okay. The title is Trump leads the race to the one trillion future of mobile payments, one trillion dollar wow. future. So these, I'm looking at these are some of the companies that are using it. You have yeah. HubSpot, um, Optimizely, uh, Foursquare. And uh, here are some of the great features. Awesome. Yeah, Twitter uses it. I mean, that's a really big deal because these are these are huge companies that are basically investing in this one solution because it's so versatile. Right. All of these different massive companies are saying, hey, we want part of you because you make it so easy. Right. So I was actually recommended to use Stripe by a friend of mine who has a really cool company called Nearby Registry which is a registry solution to be able to shop locally. Um, oh, and so that's a big thing, shopping yeah. local. And, yeah. and you know, it's you want to be able to give as much money back to the business owner as possible, and Stripe's fees were so minimal that they knew that that would be the right solution for them, and they recommended it to me, and I'm on board 100%. Um, I, you know, sometimes you find these solutions, and... I don't know if this happens to you, but I use a lot of cloud solutions. I use a lot of... Yeah, um, I do too. And there's so many different solutions for every application. And so sometimes I get a little bit like antsy in the Overwhelmed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I want to try something new now. But with, uh, with Stripe, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm not going to be changing payment processing solutions anytime soon. They're, they're, I know they're going to allow me to grow with them. That's great, and I think um, you know later down uh, when I share my tips and the solutions that I use uh, in our tip section segment of the show, um, I also have a couple that I use from the simplest to the complex. But um, one of the most often questions that we get when we process um, uh, online uh, payments, you know, um, with you, what are options for storing and accessing credit card information or? you know, other sensitive data to be used in the future. Do you get that question a lot or do you encounter that a lot? So the reason this was so important to me is uh, I needed a way, I, I, I needed a way to be able to charge people's cards automatically for my members because once mm -hmm. they sign up for my membership, they agree to be charged once a month. Uh, right. But I also needed, because I make purchases on behalf of other people, yeah. uh, I, I needed... I have a solution for small in-person purchases, but if I have a client that travels a lot and they want to be able to use their credit card with points, I needed a way to be able to store that information. Now, that's my application and why I needed to use it. People have various reasons for hanging on to someone's credit card information. So you want to make sure you're really careful about that, and there are a lot of legal limitations to how that information can be stored and I am not an attorney so <laughs> out there what I have found is that's solution. a disclaimer over there yeah. people don't <laughs> know <laughs> go seek legal counsel but right. um, what I had to do and I spoke with my attorney about ways to be able to store information and I was told that if I'm given permission by my clients to store their information then I have that permission so I needed a way to store that information where I knew it was totally secure. So as I hire people, um, they can't access it unless I give them permission. As it's just I needed something that was very, very protected. Secure, and yeah. The solutions that I was finding was you can access the last four digits of the credit card, maybe the expiration date, maybe the three or four digit code on the back, but I couldn't have the whole thing. And I didn't want to have to call my clients every time and say, what was that credit card number again? Because <laughs> I'm supposed to be taking yeah. things off their plate, not becoming a nuisance. Right. So I looked at different solutions. I looked into Salesforce. I looked into a bunch of different client management tools and some of them offered the ability to store this information but it was only on their very upper tier very expensive Plan. plans okay. and for yep. small business that doesn't make sense to be spending perhaps a thousand dollars a month just to store someone's credit card information right so then I looked into cloud storage solutions right and Dropbox, Box, iCloud, those are all really great solutions, but mm -hmm. 
Uh, Edward Snowden. He's all famous for leaking NSA's information. <laughs> so he's. Uh, I have no idea where he is. Um, <laughs> Another uh, disclaimer, there you go. <laughs> uh, he he's obviously one that's all about privacy and making sure that information is really secure. And so he actually announced that these very common cloud storage solutions are not as private as you might hope. Yes, you have a password to get in, but the people who run the back end of that site technically yeah. have access to every single piece of information that you store on there. So he recommended a solution called Spider Oak, which is, okay. I believe technically it's a cloud storage solution. Otherwise, you get your own server to store your information. So the idea is that okay. only the password holder, which is me, can right. ever access any of those files. Even if Spider Oak gets caught by the FBI, they know that someone was using their services, they cannot, they have absolutely no access to that information. So it's wow. not even possible for them to bring it up. That so is great. So for me, that makes me feel safe because I'm the only one that can access it. It's better than just written on a piece of paper in my file cabinet. It's better than putting it in a safe. So that's that's the solution I landed on because it's free. Yeah. It's really yeah. free. And you said spider rock? Spider oak. One word like the bug and the tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely make sure that, you know, we'll have it in the blog page on our website so that, you know, the folks out there could also check it out. I actually use two um two tools. Actually, they're app-based. First one um, is called Square. Um, the website is uh, is squareup.com and I will share with everyone shortly. But um, these two apps are a little bit different in nature because the, um, the Square app really was the first one, I think, that came out. You know with that extension on your phones or your mobile devices that you can run your credit cards yeah. or any kind of bank card? So Square Up actually came up with the, the idea of um, the swiper, the card reader. So when, I, when it first came out, I tested it because um, I needed somewhat of a payment, uh, processing payment tool that you do not pay high of a big fees uh, to the credit card companies and um, the ease of use. So I found Square. So I'm going to show everybody um, right here what Square Up looks like. And um, have you heard or tried Square Up? Uh, you know, I have when I, not for my own business, but I've definitely okay. gone and bought coffee and swiped. And it's great because they just send you an email or a text message with your receipt. You yes. Know, it's, and then they have a really easy way to add tip, which is great for that. Right, um, right. And the, I loved it because um, from my point of view, the convenience, um, the professionalism of a tool. So what it is, is easy, the three top features that I really, really like about Square are three things. You register for free. So I'm going to show you um, the features down here. So you can register for free. And then when you register, um, the app is actually um, on iPhone free for Apple and Android users. It's so pocket sized point of sale that powers your whole business because this is what you get right here. Oops. Um, this is the reader, the cart reader that you get for free when you register. And a lot of things, um, it, it's a very powerful tool. It has a good back end office. Um, and um, I'm going to show you another feature. The other feature that I like about it, that other than the ease of registration, um, it's a free app. Uh, you can actually uh, create an online store with your uh, Square oh. Up accounts. Yeah, it's really cool. So for instance, for many people that I know, they don't have the tech savvy knowledge to create a, a website from scratch. So if you want to sell something simple and you're starting out with a new business, you can open your free online store and uh, you start setting today it's just a click away to buy and then for all the payment processing it's only 2.75 percent 
per online sale even though if you don't swipe the card so this is really you know a good way for helping the small businesses get started without overthinking oh I have to do a website oh I have to set up my shopping cart so this is a great feature and I love about it and especially small businesses lately I've been working with a lot uh, with a lot of food entrepreneurs I think that works great for them and then one of the most important feature for many small businesses I think is invoicing so you know sometimes when you send an order because in your business you actually have it um, on automated right um, yes. uh, Sandra but yeah. for businesses that you know have um, have term like 60 days 30 days or whatever or in the company that they're dealing with or the person um, the buyer that they're dealing with would need like a actual invoice so you can actually send this invoicing uh, and the invoice to their email all right and then you know here's some of the things that uh, the reason you want to use square stop chasing checks uh, you don't have to worry about you know uh, taking the phone uh, the credit card numbers over the phone you get paid faster and then again 2.75 percent for everything um, it really makes our lives easier because when you go this is somewhat of a snapshot a screenshot of their back office for invoicing so basically you can track uh, all your invoices at a click of a button you get to see the details which I think is very very super cool you yeah. can actually see it on your phone too and you can just click right there that says pay invoice so you send this invoice say I send this to you and then you click on your phone pay invoice and you can just do it from your phone or any mobile devices I mean the, how simple can you get you well, know I why anyone still has one of those huge swiping machines you know the other one um, is called <laughs> it's called Venmo have you heard of Venmo I'm not sure. I don't think yeah. so. We're talking about how we live in an age of social. So Venmo is actually a very, very social tool. So I'm going to share with everybody. So how I got started with Venmo was um, we had gone out for dinner and my girlfriend said, my girlfriend who lives in New York said, do you actually have, you know, I said, oh, I have PayPal. They, they say, oh, PayPal is too much, too much work. I'm like, what do you mean too much work? Or I say, I have Square. She says, oh, too much work. That's a simple one. Let's do Venmo. I'm like, what in the world is Venmo? So basically it says make and share payments, send money instantly for free. The great thing about this product, it is socially driven. So basically if you want to pay for dinner, you can just send to your friends. See, you, as you can see, this is the phone. These are all the people on Venmo. All you have to do is just put like new payment, who you're paying to. And as long, for instance, Sandra, if you also have Venmo, all I have to do is put your name, put how much I want to pay you, and then pay. Or if I need money from you, I'll just put your name and then the, the amount that I want you to pay me and just request. And then you'll get it in your Venmo app. How cool is that? And then so it takes a day or two to transfer from your bank account, is that right? So yeah, that's what Venmo is. So basically, if for, and it is very social driven. Both of the users just need to download it to your phones or mobile devices. Mm -hmm. And for instance, if you want to get paid for dinner that we split last night, all you have to do is just send me um, a request for $10 or whatever amount that you want to be paid for yeah. and send that request and I'll get that in my Venmo app on my phone and then I can just at the click of a button pay you either from a credit card that I've actually uh, integrated into the phone or added to the account yeah. or I pay from the balance of my Venmo account that makes it so much simpler and my girlfriend who introduced me the, to this app actually lives in, in, in New York and she says most New Yorkers don't use cash anymore and they use this. I mean, it's such a pain especially when you're out with a group to try to split a bill and you've had a couple of drinks yeah. and your, your arithmetic is just not with it. <laughs> it later and break it down and you know it seems like it seems like a really great solution I mean before you know it we're just going to be able to say, yeah. hey, Zeph, I owe you $20, and it's just going to be from my brain yeah. to yours. And it's, you know, that's the direction we're going with it. But it's cool to see how I easy know. it is now. It, it is so easy. And the fact that 
because it is such a social app, yeah. even though it is very, you know, uh, money-based payment processing, it, they have made this app social so that, for instance, if we went out for dinner, during dinner, you can actually just say, you know, um, send a reminder or request yeah. so that you don't forget. So that's great. So no need pen, paper, just go to your phone because most people these days just have phones, right? <laughs> um, and um, send the request. Um, and it's so much easier. We live in a day and age that is all about convenience. Right. Now, what about you, Sandra? Um, I know you talk about Stripe. Yeah. Um, what are some of the best features of Stripe that you like best? Um, and maybe you can share with our um, audience um, what you like about the, the features that has helped you in processing payments at um, at your business in your business. Yeah. So there were there were a few things that were. Uh, that took the most, they were the most important aspects that I needed from a simple payment processing solution. So one is that it's easy to use. Some of these yeah. solutions are almost overcomplicated. I don't need all these bells and whistles. I just no. want to be able to get some money. So, yes. <laughs> you know, I just want but, some ka-ching. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but at the same time, I needed something that, although it was simple, it mm -hmm. had, uh, enough of a background, enough of a team behind it to make it integrate with other tools. So I built my own website. Uh, I have people pay me through my website. I needed to be able to have the tool that I was using sync up with my cloud accounting tools. I just, I needed something that was very easy, something I could just pull up on my tablet, something I could pull up on my phone, on my computer. Um, I don't use swiping. It is all entry, um, but that's you know that's fine. I think that that's also something people are used to doing, um, yeah. and so I did really appreciate that. It's it does take a couple days for payments to come through, and I brought up their fee schedule. It's pretty minimal. It's point or two point nine percent plus thirty cents per transaction. So wow. I just took that into account when I figured out my pricing. I knew that right. this is, I, I'm not accepting cash or check payments. I'm only yeah. taking credit cards. So I'm going to have to bite this, but I can also work it in. And and that's a nominal yeah. enough fee that you don't want to, you don't want to lose that money. So if there's a yeah. way that you can account for that, um, even just that 30, 30 cents or whatever, um, I definitely recommend it. But like I said, like my, the biggest things that were so crucial to me was recurring payments, automatic recurring mm -hmm. So if you do have memberships or uh, if you're on even a contract and you know that you're going to be getting paid a certain amount of money every month, you don't want to have to invoice that person. Yeah, exactly. You want to know like that, that you're getting paid. Yeah. Uh, and, but at the same time, you don't want to be restricted to only recurring payments. I needed something where if they just were making a quick one-time purchase, they could do that. Right. So, um, you know, the dashboard is really, really simple. It, uh, you basically choose your customers. You decide how you want the, where you want your money to go. Um, I just have it transfer straight into my business account. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy. They let me know, hey, you've gotten a payment. Okay, but you don't right. have access to it yet because we have to, you know, do whatever yeah. they do. Yeah. And then here's your money. You've gotten it now. So I just right. really appreciate that simplicity. And uh, like I said, like I don't have to worry about it. it I know that it's taken care of. I know that um, uh, it's going to be a solution that works. And it makes me feel really good that, it's not going to go away anytime soon because other bigger businesses are investing in their success as well. What I really like about Stripe as well is that you're not paying unless you make money. So there's no monthly fee whatsoever. There's only the fees per transaction. So, uh, you know, there shouldn't be a month where I'm not making money because I'm on a membership basis. But if that were to happen, depending on what your business is, some months maybe you don't do a transaction, at least you're not losing money on this service that you weren't using all month. And I think one of the biggest things about using all these tools is the fact that 
You're right about earlier when you mentioned that you first start out trying a lot of stuff, a lot of these tools, just to figure out which one you like best or works best for your business. Uh, but at the end of the day, you also want to take into consideration which of these apps or tools or solutions integrate with the tools that you are already using. And I think that's the best thing that you should start with because uh, otherwise you'll be using a lot of apps because we can definitely go with a hundred of apps if we you know if we really really try them all out yeah but the important thing is to figure out which ones which apps which tools which solutions integrate with the existing uh, tools or solutions that you are already using because if they don't then it that may not they may not be the ones that you want to use well wow, I mean there are so many options these days it's just again at the end of the day it does get overwhelming yeah. but again come we have to come back to thinking about how does it work for our business um, how does it integrate with the tools that we are already using in the business you know do we have to extra uh, to spend extra money to to use this tool these are some of the basic things that we often ask ourselves as small business owners um, in trying to figure out um, the payment processing um, tools or solutions so um, I mean we could really go on and on but there are a lot of those tools out there solutions out there and they are mostly um, I like to choose the ones that have um, that are app based either on the iPhones or even on the um, Android so that I don't have to invest in another you know like equipment or device or whatever again integration with whatever I'm already using so I have a smartphone I have a tablet why go get a new new stuff right so um, yeah these are the common comments that we often ask and uh, make sure everybody uh, out there you go and do your own research because whatever that we tell you on the show it may work for our business and it may not work for you so you just have to test it out yourself also so um, you know uh, whenever we're having fun the time flies right <laughs> So um, before we go, I just want to do the, uh, the normal stuff that we do. I just want to share um, uh, with you the information where you can watch Creative Chat Cafe. So you can wa go to our website, entrepreneursatstore.com. You can click on Watch Hangouts and Creative Chat Cafe. You can actually get all the information of past shows, uh, of upcoming shows right here on this page. Uh, the videos are right here. We kind of, we block them on this page. And you can also go to the YouTube channel for Entrepreneurs at Soar and there is a playlist called Creative Chat Cafe. These are all our previous shows. Watch them there. And we would also like to invite everybody to join us in the Creative Chat Cafe um, Google um, Google Plus community where we post post show conversations. I have my hangout here. <laughs> well, post show conversations posted here, and we would love to hear what you have to say. Come into the uh, community, introduce yourself. We have sections or tabs on the left here that you can announce your events and you know have just a brief discussion. Um, and again, before we go, I just want to make sure that Sandra here gets an opportunity to share her information so you folks out there can connect with her. Go ahead, Sandra. Yeah, so uh, let's see. The best way to reach out to me. I'm on Instagram right now. That's kind of... Yay! I'm all excited about Instagram. Uh, Yay! So if you want to reach out to me personally, at Seattle Sandra is my Twitter handle, my face, possibly my Facebook, definitely my Instagram. I think also my Google+. Plus. I'm trying to just make it easy across the board. But Seattle Sandra... Um, yeah, feel free to reach out to me through here. I mean, I uh, find me on my website, pursuitofseattle.com, and uh, I'm really happy. If people have any questions about how to find out about these options, how to make the decision, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy to help and provide whatever insight I have left, whatever I haven't shared already here today. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. And definitely moving forward, folks. Um, don't forget to watch. Uh, again, our shows um, on entrepreneursatstore.com, and here's our hashtag, hashtag Creative Chat Cafe uh, for all our previous episodes. And until the next 
uh, show on Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to say thank you to my co-host today, Sandra Firestein from Pursuit of Seattle. Woohoo! Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for joining us today and looking forward to the next show. Thanks and have a creative and productive week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.